So obviously every good basketball player has like a healthy amount of respect for the Miami Heat. Their organization is famous for good reason. They're a championship organization. Obviously, like you've been a fan, I would assume, of Spo and of Jimmy and Bam from afar. But like you were in the trenches with those guys this year. So what was that like? Man, it was a it was a great experience. There was no other people I'd rather be in the trenches with than those guys. Um, you know, suppose one guy that, you know, talk about bringing it every day. That guy brings it every single day to practice. Um, you know, Jimmy and Bam the same way. Um, you know, it was just a it was just perfect storm for me to be able to go in and learn from those guys right away. Um, and I was just really blessed to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I actually think Eric Spolster is the best coach in the NBA. I would agree. And he's kind of a psycho competitor. How does that like personality mesh in with the locker room? Does it almost like feel like there's just another player in there because he's just as amped up as you guys are? Oh, definitely. I mean, that guy is always uh, all, all, all his mind is always racing, mm -hmm. um, thinking about basketball plays and what, what he can do to, you know, help our team get better. Um, you know, I was telling I, they just asked me a question, you know, one of the funniest moments or craziest moments. Um, I remember Coach Spo was lifting. Um, in the weight room, well, like he always does in the mornings. And I walk in and he's listening to, you know, Zig Ziglar. I was born to win. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows what Zig Ziglar is. Do you know what that is? I don't. I Neither did I. But I walked <laughs> in and I was like, what is going on? I was born to win. And, you know, it was like something that was like almost hypnotizing him. And, you know, I was listening to it while I was working out. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was an interesting experience for sure. So. Zig Ziglar, everybody. And he was a he was a guard, I want to say, at the mid-major level, wasn't he, if I remember correctly? Like, he played in college. So, like, I, I'm sure he's just wired like most most people that come up through that mid-major mid level, too, where they just have a chip on their shoulder and they're always super, super competitive. He came up through the film room. So, like, yeah. that dude is grinded for everything that he's had. So, it just fits so nicely with your guys' identity. I would agree. I would yeah. completely agree. He mm -hmm. brings it every day. You know, he always has that chip on his shoulder. That's mm -hmm. kind of our, our identity as the Miami Heat and part of our culture. Mm. So I want to dive into your game for a little bit. You were an excellent post player right away this year. You averaged 1.26 points per possession, including passes, uh, according to Synergy. Out of 63 players in the NBA last year that ran at least 75 post up, you ranked uh, post ups. You ranked third. Okay, so you were one of the very best post players. <laughs> you were one of the best post players in the NBA last year. You personally, on your own shot attempts out of the post, shot 50%. Like, what? Uh, it really looked like it clicked for you. When I went back and watched your film, it looked like it clicked for you that junior year at UCLA was the year where you really started to develop that post game. What drove you to, to develop your low post game? Um, I would say watching Kobe Bryant uh, working from the elbows, work from the post, um, you know, mid post, low post, all, all of that. So he was one guy I really looked up to. DeMar DeRozan is another guy. Um, you know, the face up game, the pivots, everything, the fakes. So those are guys I, I really looked up to. And, you know, when I was at well, when I was a kid, I would go to the park all the time and just, you know, work on my game, just me versus nobody and, and, and just try to be as creative as I could be, um, you know, thinking of moves and, and how I could score the basketball. What do you think is your biggest area of improvement for a player uh, as a player right now? Um, I would just say for me, um, being a a consistent knockdown three point shooter is one of the things that I'm looking to to really improve um, this off season as well as you know just being a hound on defense, being able to you know guard the best player on the opposing team and and shut them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you your junior year at UCLA, according to Synergy, you got 0 0.79 points per jump shot, 0 0.87 the next year, 0 0.91 with Miami. So you're steadily tearing up as a jump shooter every year and it's funny because I, I listen to people like either commenting underneath my videos or just people talking about basketball on twitter and they're under the impression that like you just go in for a summer and you can come out a great jump shooter and it's like no it's a grind you got to shoot thousands and thousands of jump shots every single day for months and months and months and it's a slow grind and so there's obviously signs that you're making improvements on that front and and honestly i, I would imagine that's something that they need within that miami offense actually i have a follow-up for you on the post-up stuff, did Eric Spolstra approach you and say like, hey, I watched your film at UCLA. I saw how successful you are attacking matchups in the post. Let's incorporate that. Or did you demonstrate it? And then everyone was like, oh, he can do this. Let's let's try to build this out more. I would say he definitely watched his film um, <laughs> because some of the sets that we ran were like 
almost identical to the ones I ran at UCLA. So I think, you know, that's just how great of a coach he is. He knows what his player strengths are and he tries to, you know, expose that on the court and then give us an opportunity to play to our strengths. And that's just what makes him such a great coach. Mm. Um, and, you know, going back to, you know, the jump shooting thing, um, that's one of the things that we talk about a lot is, you know, success is not linear. You know, it's not a straight uphill um, you're going to go down, you're going to go up and then you're going to go down again and then you're going to go mm. up. And then, you know, to see those jumps, it, it, it takes time. And it's it, like you said, it's a grind. Well, especially with jump shooting, because jump shooting is it's such a head game, too, because you can go cold and miss four or five in a row, even if you're doing everything right. And it can just be frustrating. It's so mental. It's <laughs> it's such such a mental thing. You shoot so many shots. You're like, how do I miss? So <laughs> that's what I think. Um. So specifically with Spolstra, was there a set? Is there a specific set that they would draw up for you to get a bucket that was your favorite that you can think of? Like in the huddle, it's like we're running this for Jaime. He's going to attack this matchup. Is there one in my, that you have in mind? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few that I like. Yeah. Um, the cross screen on the baseline is one that sticks out to me. And then we have a little nose where I catch it around. Uh, well, they set a down screen for me and I and, you know, go up around to the elbow wing area and then catch it in a pick and roll. So those, those are those are two of my Yeah, get you to there. a good spot, get the yeah. defender in trail position. So for you have sure. a little bit of an advantage for sure. Was it hard for you to pick up Miami's offense or was it pretty like it was a pretty standard read and react five out stuff? Um, I mean, you know, it's basketball. I think the difference in the NBA versus colleges in the nba it's a lot of actions versus sets you know we got to get to this action okay let's get to another action you know usually you got you got two ball swings and then you need a shot because of the short mm -hmm. you know 24 seconds and versus college where you can swing the ball maybe three times um and get a shot um but it, it's all actions it's all you know basketball stuff so it, it wasn't too complicated so you play with jimmy butler Obviously, this is a guy that you probably were a fan of from afar for a long time. Uh, what was it like being his teammate? I mean, it was great, man. You know, that was my favorite player growing up. Um, so, you know, now to be his teammate, it's it's, it's a little weird, um, you know, having, you know, one of your idols now become, you know, one of your teammates slash friends. So it's uh, it, it was such a cool experience. And then you're doing commercials together and stuff. Yeah. Doing commercials. Uh, have you guys had some battles in practice? Yeah, we have some battles, you know, the one on one. Um, that's something that we do a lot after practice is have one on ones and, you know, from different spots, whether it be the low post elbows, um, even on the wings and then shooting competitions as mm -hmm. well. It gets it gets competitive. Uh, did he talk some trash to you at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. You know, he definitely <laughs> tried to test me for sure. Um, you know, I stood my ground, which I think, you know, he respected. So. So what's the plan for the rest of the summer? Are you going to take some time off after the select team or are you going to get right back into it? Oh, well, I got a game tomorrow. So. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, I'll be playing here. Oh, you're playing with Summer League. Yeah, that's 3 awesome. 3 30 yeah. tomorrow. I got a game. So, you know, been working, um, continuing. We have practice this morning and then, you know, got a game tomorrow. Excited for it. What's different about Summer League this year compared to last year? Do you just feel like so much more confident? Um, yeah, I mean, I was confident before. I think I just got a year of the league under my belt. And, you know, now it's not the first summer league, it's the second. So I, that's pretty <laughs> the biggest difference.